Welcome back to Open Campus Creative Writing. I'm Mr. Herzog. I miss Shan. She's back, right? Uh, you were actually in all the videos that we did because we pre-recorded them. So we they, did. they didn't even know you were gone. Yeah, I was gone for exactly 28 days. And now she's back. Back and better than ever. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's going to be awesome. But we're so glad that you're joining us for the second part of this course. Many of you carried over from, we. I think we have 20 joining us from the original 30. Awesome. Hempfield students and a few Penn Manor students took in only as the first part of the course. Mm -hmm. And so we're back in on the, the second part. And we are excited about this. We're excited to see. We have some different things um, coming up. And even yeah. though we're kind of starting, we're still in poetry. At the very beginning, we moved pretty quickly in the short stories, yeah. and we know that some of you are looking at just from some conversations that we had with some of you guys about that. Let's hop over to the course real quickly. As before, please remember that um, that you want to to stay. You want to kind of stay informed. Uh, make sure that you sign up for our mind. If you aren't a part of our mind, we can give you that information. It doesn't look like we have that up here, uh, but you can always contact us through the messaging system here in Moodle as well. Uh, so module five, where we kind of pick up where we left off, is on poetry. And when we left poetry in the fall, we were still doing formal poetry, and we have a little bit more left of formal poetry. Um, I want to stress, before we get into this, about how important it is for us to work through poetry, especially if we consider ourselves short story writers. Oh, yeah, in entirely. I think that, you know... Short stories are short by definition, meaning that every word that you consider needs to be thoughtfully chosen. And that's that's what poetry is all about, is every word contributes to the meaning of, of the piece as a whole. Yeah, you can't, you really can't have empty words, or you shouldn't no. have empty words. In a novel, you can get away with giving some ex extrinsic stuff that doesn't maybe play into the plot because maybe it helps flesh out characters, something yeah. like that. But in a short story... You don't have that luxury. No. And poetry doesn't afford you that luxury either. The way you craft through showing and capturing feeling mm -hmm. still important in short story. Oh, yeah. And so that's kind of where we pick up. So we're into poetry part three. And you'll see that we actually start with line breaks in poetry, which will be due, I believe, this Friday. Yep. So uh, tell me a little bit about this lesson we have coming up in line breaks. So this lesson is going to uh, really – concentrate your attention on the endings of the lines of the poem, um, how they flow into the next line, how your eyes track it. Um, it it's called the enjambment of the poem, um, you know, rhyme scheme, things like that. And it gives you an opportunity to play around with that structure with existing poems to maybe figure out how changing the structure changes the meaning or the feeling you get from the poem. Right. So, um, that's kind of where we're heading. We're get, we'll get into five more types of formal poems in the future. If you want to work ahead, I believe you can. Mm -hmm. And um, we haven't set up our formal poetry workshops, so don't post anything in the workshops yet. We're going to be doing that here in the upcoming days. Uh, but so glad to have you guys back on board. I believe that's it. Yeah, that's it, guys. Happy writing. Bye.